the zoo. I wonder what kinds of fierce, exotic, and dangerous creatures I'm going to meet here. And, of course, I'm looking forward to seeing the animals, too. That way to the monkeys. Oh, cute. No matter how cute this monkey is, I am not going to stick my hand in there. A can of peanuts. Oh, I cannot reach it. This statue is dedicated to the man who, after World War II, rebuilt the destroyed zoo, saving the lives of dozens of animals. Some prankster painted his toes red. Hmm, this seems to be one of the zookeepers. Hello. Hello. Is it true that this zoo was rebuilt after World War II? using leftover stones from other buildings? Yes, that's right. Why are you asking? I don't suppose you've noticed whether a blue stone was used in any of these enclosures? Mm, actually, yes. There should be a blue stone in the crocodile enclosure, if I'm not mistaken. No idea what building it came from originally. Thanks. You've been a great help. That's such a cute monkey you've got in that enclosure. You can say that again. I'm so eager to learn. Eager to learn? Oh, yes. I'm in the process of teaching it a few tricks. Really? How do you do that? It's actually quite easy. As soon as I pick up the training stick, I've got the monkey's attention. And then it will mimic everything I do. Training stick? You hit that monkey? For heaven's sake, no. It's just a regular long branch. All I do is hold it in my hand, and then the monkey will react. No idea why, but it works. I've been wondering why you have a whole bag of baguettes by your side. I'm waiting for the ducks. Why does everyone seem to be waiting for something around here? The bus, the ducks, Godot? Say what? Never mind. Why are you waiting for the ducks? Or, or rather, why aren't the ducks here yet? Usually they come to the lake by the crocodile enclosure every morning. They know that visitors to the zoo love to feed ducks, and therefore they're here the minute the zoo opens. Clever critters. Could I have one of those baguettes? Sure, as soon as the ducks are here. Can't I have it now? Why? The baguette is meant for feeding the ducks. How would you feed them if there are no ducks? Have a nice day. Thanks. That way to the crocodiles and elephants. There's one of the blue stones I need to find. Guarded by a lovely crocodile. Which leaves me with the not-so-irrelevant question, how on earth shall I get to it? This magnificent specimen appears to be a Nile crocodile. It marks its territory through underwater vibrations and turns into a merciless killer whenever it detects a new nearby. Grumpy teddy bear versus crocodile. What a duel. Good luck, Teddy. You'll need it. This little motorboat is tied up so well. Somebody really wanted to be on the safe side here.
the crocodile seems to be mistaking the engine's vibrations for a rival. It is completely focused on defending its territory now. Judging from all the insects on this tree, one could almost assume this is intended to be a bark beetle exhibit. Of course, I could climb up there. No problem, honestly. But I don't really care to right now. The nest appears to be abandoned. It never ceases to amaze me how such a powerful animal can appear so peaceful, almost cuddly. It's a bit too heavy to pick up. A male African elephant. Compared to an Asian elephant, its ears are much larger. Also, its forehead is receding and less convex, and its back is not rounded but sloped. Very informative. Empty, squashed, and full of tiny holes. Looks like someone vented a lot of frustration on one poor little can. A small bottle of red nail polish. Well then, let's see whether I'm cut out to be an animal trainer. Hey, it's working. Maybe this way I can make the monkey jump through the hoop. Amazing! Monkey see, monkey do. And now, I need to aim well. I always knew I'd make a great role model someday. Okay, it's just a monkey throwing balls at cans, but it's not a bad start, even if I say so myself. A small noisemaker. It makes noise. Hey, little buddy. Would you care for some peanuts? There. You're going to have to work for the rest of the peanuts. The elephant does all the work for peanuts and ends up with none while I just hang around. And I am rewarded with a way into the crocodile enclosure. Life can be so unfair. Good thing that stone was already loose. And now I'll get the heck out of here.
interesting. This noisemaker seems to appeal to the ducks. Here they come. Is it really a wishing well, or is it just a large bowl of water? Hello, everything okay? I'm really worried about you. Oh, hello. Yes, it's really not my day today. First, I scratch up my car, and then I miss my appointment. They're probably halfway to Spain by now. Oh. Oh, I'm afraid that I may be responsible for the missed appointment. Is there anything I can do for you? Anything that might cheer you up? That is very kind of you. But I've been chasing Lady Luck for years now. She is simply too fast for me. You cannot change fate. And that is that. The poor guy is totally dejected. Nina, you need to think of something quick, or you'll end up only being offered roles as a movie villain. I've heard that fountain over there is a magic wishing well. People used to come from all over to toss in a coin and make a wish. Maybe you should give it a try. If you only knew the things I have tried already. It's still worth a try, though, don't you think? Just for a brief glimmer of hope that is going to be drowned by a whole deluge of disappointment the very next second? That negative attitude isn't helping, you know. That is what my shrink kept telling me for years. She was right. Why is she no longer saying it? Because she is being treated herself now for chronic depression. What this guy needs? is a serious miracle. If I go... Sure, I... Here they come. Hello. Hello. Could I please have one of those baguettes? To feed the ducks? Uh, yes, uh, of course. They're here now. Sure. Take one, then. Have a nice day. Thanks. A little soggy, but I think that's an improvement over rock hard. I've got the perfect meal for you. It may not be a five-course dinner, but it's reasonably healthy, and it will fill your stomach. Yes. 
that actually looks quite appetizing. And it's easy on the few teeth I have left. Thank you so much. Your heart's in the right place. It was nothing. Glad I could help. Now that you've got something to eat, will you stay away from alcohol? It won't hurt to try it. I'll just take that bottle with me. Just talk to the zookeeper tomorrow. He's bound to have something left over for you. Usually the welfare of animals is more important. People aren't that much of a priority. But I'll give it a try. I'll be leaving then. Maybe this will help to render the scratch invisible. Oops! Oh, rats, I spilled a little from the bottle. I hope it won't show too much. But it still looks a whole lot better now. Mr. Rossi? Yes? You don't seem to have much luck. Maybe you should give the wishing well a try. Wishing well? Yeah, right. Nobody believes in that kind of thing these days. You know what they say? Faith moves mountains. Oh, sure. And the early bird catches the worm. I can really do without your words of wisdom. Maybe we should just give it a go. I think this might be a good investment for my five cents. I can always fish them out again. This round is on me. You'll never know if you don't try. Mamma mia! Right, this should be interesting. I just made a wish for that scratch to disappear from your car. If that works, then... Ah, baloney. Won't you take a look at least? This is a total nonsense, but I was just about to check on the car anyway, so... The, the scratch is almost gone! You see, the wishing well is working after all. But the scratch still shows a little, and there are some weird stains now. What did you expect? I only threw in five cents. Naturally, that only buys you a very small miracle. A larger sum might bring on a bigger miracle. You are right. It's worth a try anyway. Wait a moment. I will be right back. Well, have the scratch and the stains disappeared now? Hmm, not really. Typical. That's a ten cents gone down the drain. Ten cents? That wasn't very generous of you. It's twice as much as you paid. Well, maybe the wishing well feels you're playing games, so it's taking its sweet time over that miracle you wanted. Could be. I am going to stay here and wait for the miracle to happen. I will probably just be disappointed again, but it's not like I have anything better to do. Good luck, then. What an investment. 200% return in a matter of minutes. Once I'm done saving the world, I'm going to write a book about investment strategies.
the ceiling is painted. Impossible to see whether it contains one of the blue stones or not. The paint is peeling, anyway. Maybe I'll be able to somehow remove it completely. There's no water in it. I don't really want to know just how old this bubblegum is. At least you're supposed to insert Euro cents. I traded in most of my fortune for a piece of gum. Let's hope that was a worthwhile investment. Average looking, average age, average clothes. Pretty average, all in all. Things are pretty quiet here. Yes, I am hoping it stays that way. A lot of advice to citizens, telling them how to behave in the event of problems, accidents, emergencies, assaults, disasters. A drunk tank. It is empty, and there appears to be nothing special about it. A drunk tank. And back there, in the wall, is one of the stones I am looking for, if I'm not mistaken. The cell is locked, and there's no way of getting in without a key. Hello, I've got a question. Yes? That cell over there, the one on the right, could I take a look inside it? The drunk tank? What for? You're not drunk, are you? Yeah, I'm totally smashed. Really? Let me smell your breath then. <sighs> well, maybe you ought to change your mouthwash. But you're definitely not drunk. There. Getting in there shouldn't be easy now. is disgusting. I spat it back into the bottle. It's safer that way. After all, I need a clear head. But I bet the horrible taste in my mouth will linger. If I want to get into the drunk tank with the blue stone, this might be a good time to demonstrate my superior acting skills. Well, hello there, per Perdite. I'm t totally plast plastered, but I wanted to <laughs> thank you so much. Really? Let me smell your breath, then. <sighs> Ugh, that smells of cheap booze. But you don't really look wrong to me. I think we had better perform a blood test. If we must. Please, take a seat over there. I'm going to take a blood sample now. You will only feel a short sting. There, that was all. Not again. That would be my husband. He calls me every 20 minutes just to make sure I'm really working and not cheating on him. As if I had a chance of finding someone else the way I look. Please wait here. I'll be right back. I need to think of something quick, or my little ruse will be exposed. The police officer took my blood sample with this syringe. 
I'm going to dilute my blood with a little alcohol. Then she will certainly have to put me in the drunk tank. All right. So now we get to continue. I'm now going to put the blood sample in the analyzer. Ah, your alcohol level is 0.37%. How do you manage to talk or sit up straight? And how come you're even still alive? But if anyone deserves to sober up in one of our cells, it's you. No doubt about that. Come along then. That's odd. The key won't go in. The lock must be blocked somehow. Good thing we have more than one drunk tank available. Please hand me your possessions. I will keep them safe while you're in here. There seems to be another cell next to this one. A very musical one. Hello. You play really well. Thank you. I got a lot of time to practice. Oh. How long have you been locked up here? No idea. Is the war over yet? Yes, and Napoleon has been banished to Elba. What did you do? Oh, they accused me of all kinds of things. Actually, though, I am completely innocent. Yes, I guessed as much. There's a big hole in it. The result of frequent use, or rather excessive violence? A stone from the mosaic depicting a black king. I can't pull it from the wall just like that. A metal spoon. and break out of that cell, are you? Who? Me? No, no. Wouldn't dream of it. Good. In that case, don't let me hear any more scratching and scraping. Hello? Are you there? Yes. You're lucky to catch me in. I was just about to go shopping. Could you do me a favor and play your harmonica some more? Huh. You mean you want me to use my musical star performance as a cover-up? So you can scrape away at that wall? To be absolutely honest, yes. Just my luck. I finally get a bit of company, and already you're talking about leaving again. Sorry, but I've got some really important things to see to. Never mind. But before you leave... At least do me a favor and solve a little riddle for me. I just love riddles, you know. Is that really necessary? Yes. All right, then. Shoot. I'm thinking of a three-digit number. You need to guess which one. Don't worry. I will give you a few clues. The first digit is a number between one and five. Take a good look around your cell. It doesn't matter how long you search. You will never find the answer. The second digit is simple. They have you trapped. It is an odd number larger than one. And finally, the last digit, definitely even, and also to be found in your cell. They all stand, but not all of them can walk. What? Are you quite sane? Yes, thanks for asking. Let me know when you think you have the answer. I 
think I figured out the answer to your riddle. I can hardly wait. The first digit is a number between one and five. The riddle was, take a good look around in your cell. It doesn't matter how long you search, you will never find the answer. So, what is the first digit? Five. And what was the second digit? The riddle was quite simple. They have you trapped. Nine. And the last digit? The answer to the riddle was in your cell, too. They all stand, but not all of them can walk. Six. Wow, I'm impressed. What a shame that this probably means I won't be able to enjoy your company much longer. But you can be sure that you have my eternal gratitude. Zilch about art. You're a warden at heart. I've got the stone. Now I need to get out of here. What do you want? I'm sober again. Excuse me, but can be. You had a blood alcohol level of 47 percent just now. Something must have gone wrong with the blood sample. Either your measurement was wrong or the sample was manipulated. Manipulated? By whom? Search me. Anyway, I insist on a second test. And if that proves positive too, my lawyer will sue you for procedural error. Procedural error? Yes. No one but you can confirm that the blood test was carried out according to the proper procedure. There wasn't even a doctor present. You had no authority to take a blood sample. What? So? Either you release me, and fast, or I'll hit you with so many charges this place will be closed down in no time. Closed down? This is a police station. Not for long. With all those bike races and clock and seals of them from TV these days, suddenly everybody is an expert on blood sampling. Come on, Alton, and don't show your face around here again. Oh, yes, and don't forget your pass. This battered soccer ball makes a perfect container for water. Fill the entire fountain this way? Oh, joy. This will keep me on my feet for a while. All right, that should be enough. I think I will switch on the fountain. Yay, it worked. I want to get this acrylic paint off the scene. I had better switch that fountain off.
Mm, yes, I should be able to reach it that way. But I need to watch out so the stone doesn't fall on my head. Got it. Right. I should have all the missing pieces of the mosaic now. Time to go back to the cemetery and put them in their places. I inserted all the stones, but I suppose their exact placement makes a difference as well. What? A mechanical bridge emerging from the ceiling in a chapel that is 350 years old? Whatever lies behind this door, it must be invaluable. I can only hope and pray that this is Cardinal Coubertin's secret archive. Wow, what a sight. Latin. I learned some Latin in school, but not enough to read through a whole archive. Remember, you've still got me. Just how did you do it? To cut a long story short, I did really well. Indeed, but I haven't been idle myself. I managed to obtain some information that should help us find the documents fairly soon. I cannot believe how well preserved these records are. We've got something right here. Along with the curator's cordis documents that Brother Bernard sent to the Cardinal back in the 17th century. Let me recap what I have found out so far. It seems that Zendona returned from one of his pilgrimages to the Holy Land a changed man. Apparently, he had a vision during this journey. From then on, he was completely obsessed with founding a theocratic state. Very modest. Yes, but extremely convincing, as we know. He visited small villages as a preacher of repentance, warning the sinners that the day of judgment was nigh and uttering dark prophecies. Which he personally made come true. A reign of terror based on everyone's fear of the apocalypse. Yes, and remarkably successful. 
His following grew almost by the hour, especially in rural areas. People flocked to him in droves. The harbingers of the apocalypse are listed here again. First pestilence and disease, then the punishment of the greedy, followed by war, earthquakes, fire, and a great flood. We all know that, but what comes next? The harbingers are supposed to make the rulers of the world gather in the new Babel and hold council. That's where Puritus Cordis is planning to destroy them one and all in order to create a new world order. The sect thinks it's of the elite of humanity. The new Babel? What can that... New York! It could mean New York! Puritas Cordis wants to annihilate the UN General Assembly. We have to call my father. He... He will go down, along with the rest of the unworthy ones. We represent the will of God. No one can stop us. Least of all you two. Come along. Quick, run! So, we meet again, Ms. Kalenka. You remember me, don't you? The charming barkeeper aboard the Calypso? But enough with the pleasantries. Regrettably, your continued attempts to stop us are about to come to an abrupt end. There goes another nuisance. Can we get going now, or would you rather follow your pal? No? All right, let's go then. We are taking a little trip to the countryside. I've been stuck in this cell for hours waiting for that Pat Shelton character to come back. Wish I knew what he wants with me, and how Nina is involved in all this. There's got to be some kind of connection to what happened in Indonesia. Okay, let me think. They deliberately caused a volcanic eruption, and I'm a witness. If I follow that thought through, I can't help but suspect they're probably none too eager to let a witness to their evil doings run around free. Which tells me this is not going to be a picnic. I'd better get out of here. And fast. The question is, how? I have got to find something to help me escape. I assume this apple hasn't always been white and fuzzy. Ugh, do I have to? Well, I guess so. A cast iron stove door. How am I supposed to reach that? This is for picking up trash without having to bend over. Very convenient for old people. Or lazy ones. I would love to oblige. But I don't have extendable arms. If I manage to hit the trash picker and it falls in the right direction... Great, it worked. Just need to pull the door off its hinges and... Done. Right. All it takes now is opportunity, a firm whack and fast legs. Follow me. Pat Shelton wants to see you. Uh-oh. Tackling two people with my stove door is out of the question. I should wait for a better opportunity.
I am so glad you could make it. There is something I would like to show you. Nina! Yes. Max! Nina Kalenkov and Max Gruber. I would love to leave you to properly celebrate your reunion. But we haven't got the time, I'm afraid. The reason for our little gathering is quite simple. There are some things you want to know and some things that I want to know. You claim it is a coincidence that while in two completely different parts of the world, you happen to develop an interest in the very same matter. How can you expect anyone to believe that? That would be highly unlikely, even if you were total strangers. But in your case, and your collaboration with David Correll of the Church Intelligence Service is certainly more than just coincidence. I don't know who you are working for, but you must know more than you have told me. A lot more. And yet, I'm sure you do not know everything. So let us make a deal. I will now show you what you want to know. You see, truth is like an eternal flame. You can try to conceal it, try to shade it, but it cannot be extinguished. And the truth has long stopped hiding its ugly face behind the veil of technology and progress. It shows its terrible grimace day by day. 660 children starve to death every hour. Millions of people slave away in horrible, degrading circumstances while their boss has become richer and fatter all the time. The deserts are expanding. The polar caps are melting. The ozone hole is growing. The climactic catastrophe is at hand. Every day, we do our best to destroy our planet with all the powers at our command. Today alone, another 140 or so animal and plant species have become extinct. I know, it's terrible. So, can you make this world a better place? Yes, I can. Zandona was a great prophet. Too great for his time. His vision could not be brought to life in the 17th century. Today, things are different. Vision? Zandona never had any visions. He was just a very sick man who wanted to destroy the world. Destroy? How blind you are! He never wanted to destroy the world! He only wished to root out the evil that is responsible for all the destruction in our world! I will show you. This is La Palma, one of the Canary Islands, a paradise for sun-loving tourists. For us, the island holds quite another fascination, the Combre Vieja Volcano. The brittle western slope of the volcano is covered in clefts and fissures where water has collected, and now for the interesting part. By placing several bombs in carefully calculated spots, we can use thermonuclear explosions to heat that water so that it will evaporate instantaneously. If you had paid attention in your physics classes, you would know that such a sudden evaporation of water would create sufficient pressure to shatter the volcano's brittle slope and send it crashing into the sea. Can you guess what comes next? That's right, a tsunami. Waves 200 meters high will charge across the Atlantic with the speed of an airplane. The tsunami will sweep across the east coast of the United States. New York will disappear in an apocalyptic flood, taking with it the self-proclaimed rulers of the world who are currently squabbling in blind incompetence at the UN headquarters. The resulting vacuum of power will be filled by our followers, some of whom have been biding their time in key positions for decades. They will take control and lead humankind to a new golden age. Except for the people on the East Coast. I guess you won't be leading them anywhere. Haven't you been listening to me? I told you this is about saving the world. By leaving millions of people to drown? How is that saving them? 
I am saving them from their own destructiveness. They would kill each other anyway, sooner or later. But in that case, not just a couple of million people would die, but the basis for our existence on this planet would be permanently destroyed. Don't you see? Those who hold the power in this world are leading us to our doom, day by day. But now, we have a chance of seizing this evil by the root and wiping it out once and for all. Without its rulers, humankind will be as helpless as a flock of sheep without a shepherd. They will turn to God and to Puritas Cordis, for we are the ones who saw the catastrophe coming and who know how to avert any further disasters. And nobody suspects that Puritas Cordis caused those disasters in the first place. It does not befit the sheep to question the will of the shepherd. We will teach people to live devoutly. We will teach them the ways of Zandona, and we will welcome them to the new state of God. They will be led by our supporters, chosen from among the wisest of the wise and the most pious of the devout. And what will your role be in that state? Mine will be the voice that proclaims the will of God. In other words, you will rule over all the rest. So this is really about power, as always. Certainly, the power of the Lord. But that's enough of me, enough of us. I have fulfilled my part of the bargain and told you much that you probably did not know, at least not in so much detail. Now it's your turn to uphold your end. Who are you working for? What do you know? Who else knows it, and how does the Church Intelligence Service mean to prevent the inevitable? We had an agreement. Talk! Who are we working for? Church Intelligence Service? I don't know what you're talking about, but all that Zandona nonsense seems to have softened your brain. That's the only explanation I can think of. I will not be made a fool of. Very well. You asked for it. You see the grave over there? It's fresh. All that's missing is a body. So, for the last time, what do you know? Who have you told? And what has the Church Intelligence Service got to do with it? Sorry. I don't know anything about any intelligence service. And your people shot the man who might have been able to tell you more about it in cold blood. If you think this is some kind of game, you are badly mistaken. A totally unnecessary death brought on by your own foolish stubbornness. I should give you some time to think about the error of your ways. Maybe you will be a bit more cooperative when we talk again. Take her to the cell. Oh, what have I done? Max is dead. I should have prevented this. No matter how, I should have prevented it. I was the only one who could have averted this disaster. I could have saved my father. I could have saved Max. Yes, I could have. And what did I actually do? I am responsible for the death of David Correll, who died trying to help me escape. I sealed the fate of Max with a single wrong answer. And my father will be next. And what am I doing? sitting here in a cell, waiting for it all to end. I hope it will be over soon. Everyone should have their own stove door. 
It's a good thing I carry all kinds of stuff around with me. Hmm.